Hi everybody, welcome back to Critter Pulse. We're so excited you could join us. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the other videos. We're gonna jump in and we're gonna talk about a very serious condition in our cats called aortic thromboembolism or A-T-E. Sometimes you'll hear it called FATE or F-A-T-E, feline aortic thromboembolism. This is also called a saddle thrombus or a blood clot. Uh, most people call it saddle thrombus in, in cats, and it's a very devastating condition as you're going to learn, but also understanding the whys behind it. The frustrating thing about this particular disease process is that it can happen to, to any cat with any heart disease. That's the worst thing. Any disease you can pretty much imagine can at some point end with a saddle thrombus, with a thromboembolic complication. So I'm going to talk you through the disease, why it happens in basic terms, what it looks like when it happens, and then some of the options we have as far as treatment goes. I'm not going to get into super specifics about all of the diseases that lead up to it though, because those will be different videos on the disease itself. I right now just want to focus on this syndrome so that you recognize an emergency, you know how to act, and you know what to do, and you understand the severity of what we're facing here. First off is what is this? What is a saddle thrombus? This is a disease where the blood has pooled inside the heart, meaning there's, there's some kind of a disease and, and the blood is getting stagnant, it's kind of backing up, but it's, it's inside the heart. This is before congestive heart failure sets in, usually. And as that happens, the blood is sitting there, kind of, kind of having an opportunity for the platelets to start to, start to coalesce. As that occurs, sometimes we'll actually see a, a ball thrombus, meaning on our, on our echocardiography, we see a small clot bouncing around inside of the heart. Every cardiologist is very, very scared and very concerned when we see that because it means that there's probably some bad news for this patient coming. We gotta do what we can to try to prevent that. As the blood is backing up inside the heart, what happens is that clot will form, starts to get a little bit bigger, and at some point, we, we never know why. There, there's never a magic, oh, here's why it, it moved. But at some point, either a piece of that clot breaks off or the clot, the whole thing, decides to, to leave the heart, meaning it goes from the a left atrium to the left ventricle across the aortic valve and out to the body. That almost always will travel to the, the back legs. So this is called the saddle thrombus because it goes down the aorta and it stops, it lodges at the aortic trifurcation, so kind of saddling the back legs, if you will. This is a devastating disease in cats. It's something that a lot of cat owners have experienced, um, unfortunately, because it is, it is a common sequela of, of disease in cats. For those who haven't experienced this, and I hope you never do, most people would come to the emergency room realizing something is very wrong with their cat. The classic story they're going to tell, tell a cardiologist, the emergency doctor, their veterinarian, whoever, the classic story is, I, you know, I was in the kitchen, I was in the living room, I was, I was whatever. My cat let out this horrible yowl, this horrible, awful scream. I ran into the, the dining room, wherever the cat was, and I found him laying there in the middle of the floor. His back legs weren't working and, and he was moving, but he was just kind of dragging his legs as if he broke his back. That's the classic thing that people usually think when they see this is that the, the back is broken and therefore the back legs can't work. Cats are literally dragging their back legs because their front legs are working. They're able to pull themselves around. The questions that an emergency doctor would ask you, um, uh, obviously, are, well, did, were they climbing on something? Did they fall off of something? Um, did you see something that fell onto them? You know, you, you found a whole stack of uh, books off the bookshelf that came down. Um, you know, around Christmas time, did the cat knock the Christmas tree over and therefore hurt themselves? And you're saying, no, none of that. Just, just he was in the dining room under the table and, and screaming and yowling. That's a huge sign that, that this cat has had a saddle thrombus. Um, the emergency doctor, your veterinarian is gonna do an exam right away. One of the first things they're gonna feel for is actually femoral pulses. So the pulses on the back legs. Most of the time, they're, they're not gonna get anything. If they feel a pulse, it may be very, very faint, very, very weak, and they're gonna say, oh, I don't think he broke his back. I'm really worried that what happened here is this blood clot situation, this, this saddle thrombus. The other things that you may notice is that the back legs especially become very firm. Uh, the muscles themselves, without good blood supply, they start to, to firm up really quick. The, the nail beds or the paw pads start to become kind of bluish, kind of purplish. We call that cyanosis or cyanotic. The other key thing, and this is super important to our families, is that this condition is extremely painful. Imagine your foot going to sleep and, and to the point that when you stand up and take your first step, you get that kind of tingling, horrible sensation. You're thinking, oh, ow, that hurts. Imagine that for the entire back half of your body. It is very painful. It is a medical emergency 24 hours a day. The, the animals are for that moment in time suffering and they've got to get care immediately. 
My warning to you though, and this is what's so important, my warning is that I recommend for anybody any cat that has heart disease, I always tell my clients, you know, have your carrier ready always. I understand not every cat loves their carrier, but just have it in a closet, know where it is. And I always recommend keeping a towel with it. The thing is though, the towel is not actually for, for the kitty. The towel is actually for you. These cats are hurting. They are in pain. Even the nicest cat in the world will absolutely scratch you, bite you, hurt you. So I don't want that to happen. The towel is so either you can quickly kind of wrap the kitty up in it, get them in the carrier that way, more likely than not, open the carrier, wrap the towel around your arm, and then you can quickly kind of scoop them in. These cats are very fragile, they are very urgent, and you must treat them with kid gloves. Do not scare them, do not pick them up and grab them and, oh my gosh, what do we do? Shake them around, how do we get them to the hospital? Have a plan. The emergency doctors would certainly appreciate a heads up on this if it's possible to call on, on speakerphone on the way to the hospital to say, hey, I, I'm worried about this, I, I, something happened, my, my cat's back legs aren't working. They're probably gonna say, oh, we're, we know exactly what's ready. But the point is they're prepared because they're gonna start getting some things ready for you before you've even gotten in the door. They know how critical these cats are as well. The back legs, the saddle thrombus I'm mostly talking about represents about 90% of all cats with this complication. So again, it's, it's far and away the most th common thing to see. Second most common site is actually the right front leg. So if what I'm describing happens, but it's the right front leg, they're kind of knuckled, they're dragging, the leg is cold, the leg is painful, same thing, it is an emergency. There is most likely a blood clot that has affected that leg. The animals must be seen. Now, something that I want you to know is that the ER doctors are going to quickly triage. They're gonna have limited ability to do a lot because very few of these patients are stable and happy and you know uh, cooperative. They're in pain, I get it. One thing they're probably gonna do is start talking to you about taking x-rays. And you're gonna think, well, why do we need that? You're telling me the back legs aren't working and it's because of a blood clot. They're gonna focus on x-rays of the chest. The reason is roughly 50% of cats that have this complication have congestive heart failure, fluid building up in the lungs. If you haven't watched the congestive heart failure video, please do so. But that's so important because I've seen animals that are correctly treated in the immediate sense. For whatever reason, the x-rays weren't done. They didn't know the animal was in congestive heart failure. We think we're on the mend, and then six to eight hours later, this animal's in a crisis, can barely breathe, simply because that fluid kept building up inside the lungs. That is essential that we, we get that information early so that we can intervene sooner and make a better difference for these kitties. The big thing you can expect from, from an emergency doctor or, or daytime, your regular veterinarian as well, the biggest and most important thing for these animals is pain medications, okay? This hurts. This is, this is a horrible, awful pain. It is imperative that we have these animals not suffer. So what we're going to do is we're going to get pain medications going as quickly as possible. There's a lot of questions that we get about, should we, should we dissolve the clot? Should we use some of the clot buster drugs that you hear about? Should we do surgery to actually go in and, and remove the clot? The simple answer to this is that we generally don't do that. The reason is the clots themselves release a ton of vasoactive amines. This is causing horrific vasoconstriction. So, so the clot is already obstructing blood, then it's releasing chemicals that cause even more constriction. Okay? The reason we don't go in and just dissolve the clot is that there is so much muscle mass. If, if we think of a human with a clot, we usually are thinking about a stroke. Oftentimes, a, a human doctor, a physician, is going to proceed forward and give some kind of a clot buster drug because they want to preserve the brain tissue. While we want to preserve the muscle tissue, generally muscle tissue can heal where brain tissue can't. The big thing though is there's so much muscle, if we suddenly dissolve the clot, flush all the fresh blood in, this means we're flushing all those toxins right back into the heart, right back into the circulation. That's a syndrome called reperfusion injury and it's extremely serious and often fatal. So generally speaking, we don't actually dissolve the clot. What we do is support the animals, allowing them time and comfort to collateralize, meaning let those other vasoactive substances calm down. We're giving the pain meds for comfort, allow the peripheral circulation to start to open itself back up slowly so that the body can handle the reperfusion that occurs and therefore the animals can recover. Not every cat is going to recover though, and it's important for you to kind of understand where you are, how far you're willing to go, how far your family can, can handle with this, uh, including the finances, because this is not necessarily cheap. It takes a lot of nursing care, a lot of expertise to help them, and there comes the point of, of, are they too far gone? Is it too bad? Are they in too much pain? Are they not responding to our pain meds despite what we're doing? 
we then come to the, the million dollar question. We have this crisis situation and it's so easy to focus in right there and say, oh my gosh, what do we do? Dun, 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 one, two, three, let's get this done. But what about why did this happen? That's a very important question in, in my world of what is the disease that led us here? Is it hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Is it dilated cardiomyopathy? Is it restrictive cardiomyopathy? Is it unclassified cardiomyopathy or something entirely different? Is there some weird congenital defect that has, has triggered this blood clot to happen? So what you can expect is after the animal is stabilized, there will probably be a very strong recommendation to get an echocardiogram, meaning an ultrasound, so we can look into the heart, figure out what the disease is that led to us being here, and figure out what we need to do to treat this animal long term. Some of the common things that, that if I get a phone call from a veterinarian, I usually say this is what to start until we get that echo done, besides the pain medications, is something like Plavix or something like aspirin. We're using some version of an antiplatelet medication to try to prevent another clot from forming. Again, neither, neither of those medications actually stop the clot from getting bigger necessarily. It also does not dissolve the clot. We just allow the body to try to heal itself and support the animal through that. We'll get into some other videos about the diseases themselves and how it leads to this, but this is one of those urgent, more pressing situations that I want to make sure you have a grasp on and make sure you understand how to react. Um, again, they're in pain. Treat them very delicately. Uh, call the hospital. Give them a heads up that you're coming in. You've got this emergency, and, and we'll get the best workup done that we can, and we'll work to get answers so that we can help this animal and help them live long and happy. Uh, again, some of the animals just unfortunately are, are too far gone, their diseases are too advanced, um, and, or they're just in too much pain and we just can't control it, uh, and unfortunately we end up losing them. So I know that's not the happiest video, but I think it's super important that you understand the good, the bad, and everything in between. Uh, understanding how to react in an emergency is key. As always, if you have any questions, we're here to help. Uh, if you've if got new ideas for videos, topics you want to see covered, questions that you have, please leave comments below. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share. Let us know what we can do to help you and make sure you've got the education you deserve. Otherwise, it's my pleasure, and I'll very much look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.